Okay, I'm starting out this video a little bit different. I'm going to show you the before and after before we even get into, into the video because I want to show you how I did it and the tools I used to get it done. Um, we're having a problem on these workhorse chassis as they get older. The radiators are getting dirty, but what's deceiving about it is you can't see it. You can't tell. Um, the only way you can see a picture here is of a radiator a, a friend of mine sent me. And uh, the only way he discovered this is, in fact, his because this is a radiator. In front of this, we have our condenser for the air conditioner. And his condenser developed a leak, so he removed it to get it repaired or replaced. And when he did, he was shocked to see all this crud on his radiator. And of course, that was probably causing his engine to run hot, hotter than it should. And a friend of mine came by with some overheating issues. And by using an endoscope, I discovered his radiator was the same way. And he was like 80 something thousand miles so then I checked my own RV. I'm at 70,000 miles, and it too didn't look this bad, but it still had quite a bit of crud on it. It's just surprisingly, uh, when you look at the front of the condenser, everything looks fine. So I'm going to show you the tools that you need to inspect your radiator and the process to go about cleaning it. First of all, is this little tool right here. Endoscope. You can get these for about 30 bucks on Amazon. I'll put a link to it on the, in the bottom of the video. Uh, this thing's a really powerful tool. I've had this thing for years. I, and actually, I can't carry it like this in this tote. And as we travel in the RV, it's, it comes with us. Because I'm always, always using it for different little projects. But it'll go underwater and it comes with all these different little accessories. Uh, little mirrors and magnets and hooks. So you can, like for this little mirror, you can put it down a spark plug hole and inspect your cylinder of an engine. It comes with a large battery. The coolest thing is, see, it doesn't come with a screen because you use your phone. So you use your nice big screen, color screen on your phone to, to see what you're looking at, whatever whatever that little camera is pointing at. It's got that long, nice long cable. So you can stick it out in behind the radiator and get a good view. Um, even in the dark, it doesn't matter. Also, a cool function of it is it, you can record. That's how I got footage here I'm, I'm about to show you. I use this little device to record this footage. So anyway, so you can see that's what your radiator may look like right now and you just don't have a clue that it does. But I'll show you how to do to get to it. But another thing I wanted to point out is uh, what a scan gauge. Finding, finding our true, true temperature, you know, we need a digital readout. And this is something kind of new and I've got one. I've been playing with it for a couple months. I got a video coming out shortly about it in more detail. But, uh, you know, I wouldn't, if you own a workhorse, this is a must have tool. Because uh, with it, you get your trim temperature on the engine, your transmission. It has programmable alarms. That's one of the coolest features. So, like if you're driving down the road and you drop a heater hose, you start to overheat. Before you damage your engine, the alarm will go off. You can program the alarm to like go off maybe at 220 degrees. That's what I've got mine set at. Very cool device. So, uh, in itself, you can update it over Wi-Fi. And take you know, like I said, I think transmission temperature, engine temperature, torque, voltage. It does so much stuff for you. And you'll see more when I do a video later. All right, back to this thing. You know, that, that, that's one thing. That's another tool I used. I'll, I'll put it in the link. You'll see it here in the video. What else was I going to point out? I was going to point out how cheap this is. Yeah, right there it is. There yeah, for like 31 bucks, you can get this little um, endoscope. And also else, something else we used was Simple Green. So I'll have all these links here in, in, in the video. But the good stuff is right here. I wanted to show you. This is footage I filmed. I got the, I got the files, of, but, but there's no audio. And I tried to record audio over top using my software here. But my volume was really low. So I'm just going to do it this way. Um, let me show you here. Because it does good video but there's just no sound with it so I took the endoscope and stuck it down in here this side this is the condenser you see the condenser looks fine but on this other side that's the radiator you see I was just pushing it down in there rotating it around different angles that's how plugged up that radiator was on my, on my friend's RV um, that's one video I did let's get another one up here Okay, let me start this one over. This one's a good shot. I mean, it was just about completely plugged. It's now black. Get close to it there so you can see it good. Now that's the before. And I'll show you the after. Because you can take that scope so you can see we're getting way down deep. Down toward the bottom of the, the radiator core. 
it was just plugged up but to look at it externally it looked perfectly fine let me show you some after okay now here's the after after we did the cleaning process just a few little speckles left in there but I think we went went over it about three different times see them I keep moving around because that's the condenser side and that's the radiator side but you can see what a huge difference that, that difference that made getting all that cleaned out get a little bit closer but your radiator needs to look like this if it don't you need to address it and get it in good shape all right i think here's some footage i think i got all the way to the bottom where the bolts were and i pulled it back up through that's a great little tool to have all right so now we'll get on with the regular video showing you exactly how we got it clean okay it's late at night i'm trying to show you what we're trying to achieve here trying to figure out how much crud is in, in behind this in the radiator we're having some overheating issues and you see where i got my um my uh, what is this thing called oh, an endoscope i'll put a link to this endoscope because it's great um, whenever we travel, always keep this thing with me because it connects Wi-Fi to, up to the phone. So you have the phone, nice big screen to look at. So anyway, I ran it in behind, and you can see here. So here's our condenser for the air conditioner, and behind that is the radiator. And uh, I'll, actually, thanks to a YouTube subscriber, he sent me a picture. He removed his. He had a leak in his condenser. He removed it. And when he removed it, he couldn't believe how filthy the radiator was. It was almost almost completely blocked. Uh, so he sent me a picture of that, and I'll show it here uh, on this video so you can get an idea how bad it was. So I got to thinking about mine, and, and mine is somewhat bad. Not Nothing like his, but now this is a buddy of mine. just just came up from Florida. He's having some issues. So... Um, you can see how much crud was in there now it's just on one side and it's kind of difficult to get to now there is you can take a couple of screws out you see there's a screw there i think there's about three there's another one there's one more tucked back in there that it's kind of tough to get to because it's in behind that hose there it is that rusty screw right there you can take those three out and then you take a screwdriver and, and prize this back about a half inch just to get in there that's one way uh, now the other way there's a little gap right down there you can see where my blue cables going and I'm gonna try to get on the other side but it's gonna be a little bit tighter I'm gonna see if I can't get a camera shot in there and do a little video and then I gotta try to figure out a plan to get this thing cleaned out uh, and get it so hopefully I can do it before and after I got a plan we'll just see how it works so let me try to get this into scope on the other side of this radiator and see what I can see all right, so you see, it was tricky. I was able to get some pretty good footage though. That's how, how I ran the endoscope right down there and behind the condenser and the and the radiator. There you go. So let me give it another shot here. You can see it. But there I ran it. That, that last video I just took. Now look at the front. See now the front of this looks fine. A couple bugs. Don't look bad at all. Let me take you under the RV and show you something. Okay, so now here we're on the, on the back side of the radiator. I've removed the, the fan and everything out of it because we're going to put in a, uh, a fan clutch. You see, the clutch is missing. But you see here, everything looks fine. You look at that radiator and say, oh, that's... You'd say, well, there's a mud dauber we got to clean off. But you'd look at that and say, there's nothing wrong with this. But you just can't tell on the other side, it's absolutely filthy. And there's no way to access it. See, it's completely sealed up. There's no way from the bottom. There's no way from the top. Let me get under here. See right here. You got all this metal plate. So I got a plan. Let's see if it's going to work for me or not. Seeing we got the fan stuff out of the way. I don't know how it's going to work, but I got me a little spray nozzle set up. On a water hose, maybe I'll spray some 409, some stuff in here to loose, let it soak, loosen up the dirt. You got to be gentle. You don't want something too strong. It's going to damage the fins. So, of course, now it's like 4 in the morning. I'll start this project maybe tomorrow. At least we have some video footage. We can do a before and after. 
Hopefully it will be a success and this is something you probably need to check on your RV. This is a 2005 Atasca on a W24 chassis with a 8.1 Vortec. We're having some uh, overheating issues. Uh, so that will be, uh, uh, I'm sure that's not helping matters at all. So uh, stay tuned, let's see what else we can get into. All right, you see what we got here, a simple green. And we're going to spray this real good. Let it soak a minute and then hit it with a spray nozzle. We'll hopefully get this thing cleaned up. Got a burnt dirt dollars there. Well, that's all we're going to do. I guess you could still do this with the fan in place, but it'd be, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. It's amazing how clean it looks on this side, but it sure is filthy on the other. Oh, okay, you can see all this dirt and stuff that's coming out. Well, good. All right. At least we can tell we're starting to do something. All right, well, I'll get back there and do some more, some more scrubbing from above. Looking good, looking good. Hot water, hot water. Got some steam coming out now. Good stuff. I have to show you my my um, hot water device I, I set up. Yeah, I'm getting this steam from. So I built this contraption about 10 years ago. It's uh, it's like a it's an, it's like an instant hot water heater like you you have for your house, but just homemade. So what I've got here, I got three heating elements. Each heating element is 5,500 watts. So when the cold water comes in from the water, see the water spigot there. The water feeds in from the bottom. It hits element number one, then element number two, then element number three. By, by, hits, by the time it hits element number three, uh, at six gallons a minute, I'm, I'm maintaining about 120 degrees. If I slow my, my flow rate down, it, it gets so hot, I'll have steam. So it works really well for projects like this. Just on the opposite side of the wall of that heater, just on the back side, the heater sits behind this wall on the outside. And I got these three breakers, just turns them on. Three 40 amp breakers. That's powering up my heaters. And so now it's to go do some scrubbing. All right, just to be just to be thorough about this project, we pulled the fans off. It's easy enough, just four 10 millimeter screws. So we're gonna get in here and clean all this crud off, try to do the best we can. And it's already looking a whole lot better. So we're gonna do the condenser and then we'll do the in, inside the radiator one more time. So it's the next day after uh, cleaning out the radiator and everything is dry now because the driveway was clean, but you can see all the crud that we got out of it. You see it goes way on back there. So well, there was a bunch of stuff in that radiator. Just to give you an idea, and remember to look at it, it looked perfectly clean. There's probably a lot of RVs driving down the road right now. Those radiators clogged up and overheating and we just don't know it. Now here's a close-up view of some of that stuff we got out of there. Don't know exactly what it is. But look, look there. That sure does clog the radiator good, whatever it is. I don't know if it's bug, bug remnants, dust, pollen. But it had a whole bunch in there. It's everywhere, it's everywhere. But it ain't no more, at least it's not in the radiator. Okay, I'm real pleased how this turned out because it's an 88 degree day here, pretty hot. And now we're down to 195. And I'm still getting a good loud roar on that fan. 
and the temperature dropped, dropped really quick. So, of course, the true test will get it on the road, but I think it's going to be fixed. So if you want to tackle this little project, this is all you need. Some simple green, this little thing here. The, I'll send a link to it. I've had this thing for years. Uh, Dips Tech? Dips Tech? I don't know how you pronounce it. Anyway, I'll put a link to it. They're around 38, 40 bucks, somewhere in that range. But they're a great product because it connects to your phone. That way you use your big screen on your phone to see it. You can record with it, take pictures with it. It does a super job. And then this wand too. I've modified mine. It used to be like a little flexible piece. I've lost it. So I added me a little 45 degree piece on it. But uh, I'll put a link to these. Because remember, you don't want to use a pressure washer on this. you got to use you know mild pressure. And you got to stay straight on the fins. Don't come at it come in at it at an angle and do not use this jet here do not do that you want to use a fan spray if you use a jet spray like that and happen to hit it at an angle you'll bend your fins so do not do that stay on a fan spray that, that'll do you a good job all right there you go